Hey, it's the first day of the second week, Monday, and I'm having a bit of a low. I'm just like so tired, like, oh no, don't work dog again, I can't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> in philosophy, we talked about memory, it's the fifth uh, vritti, so you know, vritti are these mental modifications of our consciousness. Remember pramana, right knowledge, by. I don't know, uh, right knowledge, false knowledge, um, imagination, sleep, and the fifth one is memory. And so how memory, how so many of our thoughts are about memory, and it's keeping us in the past when we're attached to that, and if we don't want to let go. It's Tuesday, day two of the second week. And um, in the morning in the asana praxis, um, practice, I was, um, again, not so motivated first, still tired and um, quite emotional today. I had quite some things coming up and um, the interesting thing was that um, while you do yoga, I think it's good to just stay there with your emotions, even if you feel a little bad and you don't really... Um, like what you feel you just keep on doing the yoga and just let it kind of pass through you and then afterwards it's it's gone so instead of distracting yourself you do yoga and you stay with the emotion um, so that actually was nice then we had philosophy class and we talked about four of the yamas which are um, ideas about ethics and how you should behave with others the first and maybe most important one is ahimsa, non-violence. So the teacher stressed that, you know, it's for example easy to say to someone, I love you. It's much harder to say to them, I will not hurt you. And ahimsa means that you don't hurt other beings and you don't hurt yourself. Also not by talking badly to yourself, for example, yeah, to be by being violently with yourself and that's where it starts um, the second one is satya truthfulness which basically just means or, or would, which means to be aware of reality as it is the third one is asteya no theft and it, it's not really so much about stealing things although that's also an aspect but it's also about stealing something in your mind in your thoughts so for example you see someone with a nice skirt and you think oh I'd love to have that skirt for myself and then the theft has already happened so the teacher said or you see a nice guy or a nice woman you think I need to have that <laughs> him or her and that is also a theft somehow so competition and wanting to impress others this all um, belongs to asteya or not living as Taya. So if you were totally living as Taya, you wouldn't compare yourself to others anymore and wouldn't try to get what they have, but rather live your individual life. And um, I really got aware of that today again, how much I also tend to look towards the others in, in the yoga classes sometimes and kind of compare myself to them and think oh no they can do this better or that better or this worse um, and he just reminded us of the fact that yoga is about yourself and you should not compete with the others but you can if you want to compete with yourself so you can see every day oh i got a millimeter further down um, yeah and i think this really helped me to enjoy the asana class again more in the, in the afternoon. Um, the fourth yama is aparigraha, non-possessiveness. So basically it's a realization, a realization that we can never really possess anything. It's also not uh, other human beings, of course, like sometimes we get a bit possessive over our partners. But we cannot possess them and we cannot even really possess things. I mean, we possess them for a time being, but at some point we will die or they will go or, or be destroyed or whatever. So you cannot really possess something. It's just there. That's the idea. And so this Yama teaches you to be detached. 
so not clinging to objects or persons. Yeah, and if you follow these, you are already in a much more peaceful state of mind. So is the idea. There's a fifth yama that hasn't been mentioned yet, Brahmacharya, um, sexual continence or um, restraint. Um, I guess we're still going to talk about that. Then in anatomy and physiology, we talked about the fact that um, about the endocrine system, so hormones, and how the effects of the endocrine system can last quite long. The teacher even said it could be 45 to 60 days until the hormones are really gone, like some of the hormones. I hadn't heard that before, that it can be that long, um, but might be. Um, we talked also about the fact how we always uh, swing from pain to pleasure in our lives. And even the pleasure can be painful because when we have a very pleasurable and happy time, we are often quite soon scared to lose it again. And it is going to happen anyway because the pendulum goes this way, that way, this way. And this, the place where we are in balance is here in the middle. And Ro Roshan, the teacher, stressed that you know, Roshan, or me, Vera, I am con constantly fluctuating. Yeah, this person that I think I am is fluctuating between pain and pleasure. But my real me, my higher self, has never even left this point. It's always in balance, it's always there. That's the idea. And, um, oh yeah, and then we have a really cool teacher, like another class that we didn't have last week, where we learn about the exact adjustments in the in the asanas. And that is really cool, because we get to learn and we are being adjusted perfectly, uh, even more than in the other asana classes. And now we got some homework. So here we have all these nice books. And um, we are supposed to learn 25 postures in totally in detail and write down all the details so um, that at least 25 postures we will know perfectly for our students. Mm -hmm.